Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Working well together. So I want to teach on two qualities you need to work well together. Two qualities we need in church to work well together. Last time I was here, I believe I was taught on catching the spirit of your leader. You cannot function in a church without catching the spirit of your leader. And I remember I explained there are six kinds of people in every church. Then I explained also there are four kinds of people in every church. In every church you have the worshippers. Those who are just there to worship. Then you have the members. Then you have the learners. In every church, we don't all do the same thing. That's why we don't all get the same results. There are worshippers who just come to worship. There are those who graduate from worshippers to become members for identification. And if we're going to work, work well together in our churches, we must become not just worshippers who just come and just worship and receive things from. Because these days, many people have made the church, they have turned the church into a takeaway center, a drive through, KFC drive through, Big Be um, uh, Burger King drive through, Wache drive through. Tilapia Junction. Now, if you, don't, if you don't say the drive through, you are the one I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'm not afraid of you. We've turned the church into a takeaway center. They say marriage couples, you can get married partners there. So you come and collect and then you go. And when we call you and say, oh, why are you not coming again? You say, hey, 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 Bishop, hey, 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 relax, relax. The only reason why I came there was to look for a married partner and I got it. What's your problem? Why are you calling me? You see, the fact that you got something doesn't mean you can keep it. Getting something doesn't mean keeping it. Getting married is one thing. Staying married is another. Staying happily married is another. Staying fulfilled in the marriage is another. Wanting to stay there and not resign is another. If you don't clap, I didn't come all the way from London to just come and tickle your ears. No, no, no. I came for us to work well together. Shout a louder amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, just in case you thought you were coming to this church to collect your breakthrough and go. Today, that thought ends today. Hey. Everybody in the Bible who got their breakthrough, they stayed there to keep their breakthrough. Ten lepers came to Jesus. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. <laughs> Only one person came back. Look at the statistics of people who come back to the church to give, to, to, to give glory to God and serve in the church where they got their husband, their breakthrough, their chalet water, I mean their shoe. No babi eh, no me chale watu. Me no owo shu. Owo, moko kebo, nye, anye na kebo awye don. El ba chapur ha, chale watu ene eche, inde nye shu ha, o bie tu me nyo wun kasa. Adan, Adan, a law by yourself. Look at your name and say, are you the one bishop is talking about? Tell them you look suspicious in your chair. If you don't clap, I will do something to you today. Those of you, I was here last year, like this year in May, and I met only those who came to midweek service. Today, the rest of you are here. So, everything I have for you, I will give it to you before I leave here. Are you shouting? Are you screaming? Ten 
lepers got their healing. Only one came back to say thank you. And listen to what Jesus said. Thy faith has made you whole. Which means healing is different from wholeness. Getting a marriage partner, <laughs> there's no me you will marry. No, you found somebody, no, and then somebody's interested in you. So now we can't tell you to do anything in church. Engagement doesn't mean marriage. Marriage doesn't mean forever. It is when you sit under the teaching ministry of the pastor and the church where you got your breakthrough that the word settles you and settles your business and settles your marriage and settles your life and settles your healing, settles your deliverance. This clapping is suspect on the left hand side. Any part that doesn't clap, they are the ones who are guilty and are interrupting our service. Only one. Look at the statistics. One out of ten. Ten lepers were healed. Only one came to give tithe and offering. Decide to be the one that returns to give thanks to God. Look at the statistics. Jesus said, thy faith has made you whole. The nine people didn't come back because they know they must give offering. Yeah, according to Leviticus, when you go and show yourself to the priest that you are healed, the priest will speak over you and declare your healing complete. They didn't want to come back to Harvest Chapel to come and give offering. So they didn't come. If you are not a tither, I'm not surprised that things are tight. If you are not tithing, if things are tight, check your tight. If you are suffering, check your offering. Hey. If things are tight, check your tithe. If you are suffering, check your offering. Yeah. You can't work together if you don't tithe and you don't give your offering in your church that has made you. Some of you, when you joined this church, you were skinny like a broomstick. Today, some meat has come on your skin. Your breasts were like tangerine. Today, it's like watermelon. Hey. If you don't clap, I will remove the wig from your head. Hey. Before you came here, your hair was suffering from erosion. Pogomiasis. Recession and inflation. Today, look at how nice your hair looks. And you don't want to tithe. And you don't want to give. And you don't want to be involved. And you don't want to be committed. And you don't want to come early. Look at the lipstick you have been wearing. Look at the perfume you have been wearing. When you came here, you were wearing tulale, 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 tulale. If you don't clap, I will do something to you. Your pastor told you, fast in your seat belt. He knew what he was saying. You better fast in your seat belt before I finish with you today. Tell your neighbor, say amen before the man removes your wig. Say amen before the man removes your wig. Only one came back to say thank you. Look at the lame man at the beautiful gate. The moment he got his healing, the first place he went was inside church. Peter's mother-in-law was suffering from flu or fever, had a fever. Jesus held her hand, lifted her up. First place the woman went was into the kitchen to cook for Jesus and the disciples. When you get your breakthrough, that's not time to go to another church. That's not the time to travel to Dubai. When you get your breakthrough, you get God gives you breakthrough so you stay in the same church and use that breakthrough to make the church breakthrough. That's how we work well together. Listen to what God said to Moses. Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. God delivers you, saves you, heals you, so you will serve 
when you marry you shouldn't backslide you should front slide some of you them the, one of the worst things that can, can happen to you your spiritual life is when you marry and it's not from today it's been in the bible all this time three people jesus said to them come follow me one of them said we have married we are going on honeymoon how long one year there are some people when they the last thing you want to pray for them to get is a husband or a wife that's why when god gave abraham the son abraham forgot god so one day god had to come and remind him bring me the son that son i gave you that you are not praying in tongues again and your tongues has decreased from shagalaba to kolo 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 kele wele, kele wele, kele wele. some of you when you get breakthrough you backslide you don't front slide your church attendance becomes miserable because of a husband because of a wife because of a child now my she i can't come to church because of my children now it's children not children it's children not children what kind of pronunciation is that children my children my children mini children ever children and yehuda which children have we not got before you are the only one who has a child the things you used to do in your church you have stopped doing it because you have got children husband you have got a honey and darling and baby and sweetie when they start beating you come and call me no wonder when you look through the bible god often kept saying remember remember don't forget remember remember the lord thy god for it is he who gave you the power to get well he ash, 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 ash. Who you are today, who I am today, where I am today, what I have today is by the grace of God. If you don't clap, ah. the psalmist said, I slept and I awake, for the Lord sustained me it was not the comfortability of your mattress which was the reason why you woke up you slept and you awoke for the lord sustained you not your mattress mm. Thank you. Thank you. look we live to serve god in addition to your secular work and everything your life must be a life of serving god you close work, you are serving God. At work, you are serving God. Saturday, you are serving God. Sunday, serving God. Monday, serving God. Every day. In addition to the work you are doing, serving God is the reason why he saved you. Hiya. He says, if you will obey and serve me, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. <laughs> and pay your abandonment spending your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures by serving god look if you don't tithe what you should understand is that everybody pays tithe willingly or punishably uh -huh. I've read, I've, I've just put a good big word there, punishably. You either pay tithe willingly or the devil takes it punishably. Everybody, listen to this shocking statement, everybody pays tithe. Knowingly or unknowingly. You give it willingly or the devil will take it some kind, some way. You'll be using your money, today your car breaks down, your nose breaks down, your marriage breaks down, your fridge breaks down it is the tithe to give, give to god that the devil is taking in repairs everybody pays tithe knowingly or unknowingly willingly or unwillingly if you don't clap you are the one i'm talking about and i'm not afraid of you everybody pays tithe you <laughs> you either give it willingly or the devil will find an agenda for your money oh yeah you go to the chemist you go to the pharmacy you go to the doctor they keep charging and you see god said if you don't tie you are robbing me in 
Kama ma steal from a man, but to steal from God, you are there. You do, you are there. To steal from a man is one thing, but to steal God's ten percent, you too, you are there. Anytime money comes into your hand, you owe God. God is the landlord. You are the tenant. If you are a tenant in somebody's house and you don't pay the rent, they sack you. I don't like your clapping here. How can we work well together when half of us pay tithe and half of us don't pay tithe? Half of us give offering, half of us don't give, and yet you come with your cool self and come and sit on this cushion. This cushion chair, we should give you a chair that chooks your bum. Uh huh. Look at the comfortable chairs you are sitting on. How did we buy it? We didn't pray. And then the chair came. The chair came by money. If you don't clap, I will do something to you. Black people don't say amen. When you are what you are saying, they don't like. Are you saying amen? Before I do something to you, say amen. Look at the chair you are, brother. The chair you are sitting on, is it choking you? Is it choking you? So why don't you pay your tithe? Why do you choke the church? Why do some of you choke the church? It's not only you. They are in London too. They are there. Pa. My people, they are there. Pa. My people, they are there. Pa. They always want things to be done for them, but they don't want to do anything for the place that is doing something for them. Look at the first time I came to this church. I announced that I haven't even seen this in London. Look at them. Look, look, look at this. <laughs> my, my wife said, Magnificent. We don't have this in London. You have it in Ghana. I don't like the clapping. I don't like the clapping. Look at this. If you are in your church, every other church, the, the roof, the roof covers everything. You are you are in church and seeing the sky. It's like you are in a plane. You are in a plane. British Airways, Emirates. You are in church, serving God, seeing the clouds, seeing heaven. If you don't stand up and shout, I will do something to you. What do you mean? Which church have you been to? And you are in church, and you can see the clouds. You can only see the clouds in a plane. In a plane. So you are in Harvest Chapel Plain. Hey! Have you been to any church? Sit in the church and see the clouds. You didn't think of it before. I came all the way from London to remind you. I came here for the first time, and the first person I told that I'm coming back was here. One of the reasons was because of the clouds. I haven't seen any such cloud in any church. I don't like your clapping. Your clapping is envious. Your clapping is jealous of the bishop. Look at architecture at its best. Look at architecture at its best. The church that sees clouds when they are worshipping God. The next advert. The next advert, evangelism. The next advert you put on social media. Come to the church that sees clouds when they are worshipping God. The only church that sees the clouds, the heavenlies, when they are worshipping God. These are some of the ways we work together to build our church. Advertise your church in a positive way. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. yes sir. You don't want this. What do you want? Some of us in London, we are still perching in certain places. We are in London, but perching in certain places. Look at you. You climb stairs one, two, three, to get to the balcony. You descend one, two, three, to come to the main hall, and you are seeing clouds. <laughs> Relax 
vast atmosphere. I checked my iPad and there's something called iCloud. The only church I've seen iCloud. A church that has its own iCloud. It's Harvest Chapel. Are you shouting? The next t-shirt, the next t-shirt you do in this church, it must be initiated by you, not by the bishop. Next t-shirt, I belong to the church that has iCloud. People will just read and wonder, what does that mean? iCloud. Let me come there and see that iCloud. Then they'll come and stay in the cloud. Those of you at the back here, you are not clapping. And you are not standing up. I don't know. You don't like the cloud. You like to sit in the trotro. You want to sit in the trotro. You don't like the cloud. <laughs> are you screaming? Are you shouting? Yeah. You know, sometimes people don't know what they have until they've lost it yes or to the people that are in their lives who they should have appreciated are no longer there yeah, sure. you don't want to pay tight here you don't want to come here regularly where do you want to go opera you want to go to places where there's i see i see i see they don't see nothing you want to go to places where you fall down when Adam fell down, he got up with a wife. When you fell down, what did you get up with? When Adam fell down, he got up with a wife. When you fell down in that church, what did you get up with? You fell down gossiping and woke up gossiping PhD. If you don't clap, you are the one I'm talking about. your neighbor neighbor why do you like falling down <laughs> sit down before i do something to you your bishop told you fasten your seat belt you thought he was joking no it's real it's real yeah, yeah real yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's my ministry you try it they may kick you they may beat you me is my anointing i have anointing for you yeah, I tell people if you don't say me, I will do something to you. Uh -huh. You can't do anything to me. Yeah. Because I don't want you to forget what you are hearing. God is the one who chooses who should pastor you. Just as you don't choose your biological father and biological mother, you don't choose who should pastor you. Second Samuel, go to Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 10, and in Jeremiah chapter 3, 15 to 16. For you to become everything you are supposed to be, God chooses four things for you: your spiritual parents, your church, your biological parents, and your family. Second Samuel chapter 2. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 10. I will, this God speaking, I will appoint a place, a church, a ministry for my people Israel. And I will plant them. Not they will go and keep coming, go and come, go and come. No. I will not be Shabodonko. God said, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. And I will plant them. And they shall move no more. And because they are planted there, the children of wickedness shall not afflict them anymore. Your clapping is going to Bukum. Your clapping is going to Tesinua. You don't belong to two churches, you don't need two pastors. When God gave you a biological father, everything you needed in a father was in that father. When God gave you a mother, everything you needed in a mother was in your mother. When God chooses the pastor for you, everything you need in a pastor is in your pastor. 
this clapping has gone you see you, you don't believe it that's why you are not clapping i will explain it you see that's why the bible says in second chronicles 20 20 believe in the lord and you'll be established believe his prophets and you shall prosper this morning one of my associate pastors is preaching in our church and i gave him what to preach and what to preach is your pastor and your prosperity your prosperity is tied to the pastor whom god has appointed for you you see running around and i see and i head and I, who who finishes work and go to four houses to sleep at night when you close work there's only one place you go and sleep your house so why would god give you two houses or two churches you can only drive one car at a time not two at a time you look like a, a, a caricature driving two cars at the same time god gives you i will appoint a place for my people israel christians and i will plant them and they will move no more don't move from your church because everything you need in your church god put you there he knows where he puts you he knows where to bring your breakthrough he knows where to bring your husband where to bring your wife where to bring your promotion what are you clapping or what are you doing i was impressed yesterday when a brother took me from where i am to town north Kanishi, and the sat nav the dps was directing us saying teshi road in london i hear smith road john road turn left onto Kang keta road and i was sitting in ghana in a car and the car was saying turn left into teshi road and turn right into odiko road and turn left in okokoroko road i was impressed ghana has sat nav and gps and the gps takes you from one destination to another safely and on point god is bigger than satellite navigator you are now in your life financial life marriage life career life church life and he knows where he's taking you are you trying to tell me that if a sat nav or gps can take you from one place and land you where you want to go gps knows where you are now and gps knows where you are going that god doesn't know where you are doesn't know which church he planted you and cannot find you here when he puts you here and cannot bring your husband here your promotion here your wife here does he god know where he puts you does he god know the church he told you to go to so when he needs you he can find you and bless you do you have to change churches when god says this is where you must be god came to the garden he put adam in the garden everything adam needed there were four rivers four multiple streams of income did you know adam did not even pray for a wife as long as adam was in the garden of eden harvest chapel international god brought his wife there without prayer adam didn't pray can tire, tire, tire. i'm dying you know that god adam didn't apply online consider me.com i'm dying.com i am lonely.com who will consider me.org.uk.gh i have not seen in the bible anybody apply for a husband when they are planted in one church tell me in the bible who applied for a husband or a wife most of the women who were picked were picked by men who were sent there to pick them jacob landed there and picked two women you don't need two you just need two in one abraham sent his servant to his hometown to pick one rebecca rebecca was busy serving in harvest chapel and then adam abraham sent his servant to go and pick the woman free of charge to come and marry somebody whom he was going to give everything that he acquired women why worry yourself today you put on blue lipstick tomorrow turquoise lipstick tomorrow violet lipstick the other green lip and no man is looking because you are looking so frightening 
I don't like your clapping. Stop looking like a caricature and save God. Stop painting your face like Jezebel. And just save God. And they will come looking for you and pick you among the crowd. Men are looking for women who are serving in church. Not those who are looking at their na long nails that can move from here to the corner. These women are not clapping because of what I said. If you don't clap. I told you the last time I was here. When you go to church, watch and pray. Don't just pray. Watch and pray. Watch the potentials. Watch. Watch those who are busy serving God. Tithers, givers, servers, punctual, prayer warriors, ushers, protocol, security. People who are doing something in church. With their hearts. Not because of a partner, but they are just serving God. You know where I picked my wife from? From the choir. I just, I didn't go and just sing. When I was singing, I was watching. And selecting. And choosing. If you don't clap, you are envious. Your jealousy is too much this morning. I was sitting here in the base section and she was sitting there in the altar, auto section. Every time they send her to go and strike KC, I am watching Kalaba Dayada Shanda Efanto Kayada Sakataya. But both my eyes were open. It was not closed. If all is closed, how can you see potential? Look at your neighbor sitting next to you and say, Open your eyes. Ladies, your prize is far above rubies. I wrote a book, it's, in the, it's over there. It's called No Ringy, No Dingy. No ringy, no dingy. Say it before I do something to you. No ringy. All the ladies do this. Do this. All the ladies do this. No ringy. No dingy. If the man has not put a ring on your finger, close the dingy. Close it. If you don't scream, I will do something to you. All the women scream. All the women shout. This is not free. This is the reward of serving God. Look, if they get you cheaply, they will leave you cheaply. But if they struggle and work hard, to get you they will struggle and work hard to keep you find something to do in God's house and the two things I'm leaving with you is faithfulness and loyalty There's a difference between faithfulness and loyalty. I'm going to give you a few. Faithfulness is an activity. Loyalty is an attitude. You see, people are very busy trying to do things in church to impress the bishop. So you see them doing this and doing that. Meanwhile, when bishop is not around, they don't do it too. You see people, you see people praying. When bishop is not around, they are pleased the way as soon as they see Bishop, I can't tell a fire. I can't tell a fire. Look, Bishop is not the rewarder. It's God who is the rewarder. Everything you do for this church or against this church, you are doing it for God or against God. Jesus said, I will build my church, not our church. We are just caretakers. Yes, but we don't own the church. Yes, sir. If you get offended because they discipline you, you are offended at God. It was God's message we were preaching. We are just messengers. We didn't write the Bible. Yes, Why get offended and leave a church? Because they corrected you or told you, sit here. And you didn't want to sit there. Who did 
discharges themselves from a hospital when they have not been healed correct fully who discharges themselves from a hospital and the church is a hospital full of patients your disease and the one sitting next to you is not the same but they are all patients in this church so why discharge yourself from a hospital when you haven't got your full healing look at your neighbor and say neighbor there's nothing you do for me nothing you do against me that will make me leave this church i have my own problems and you have your own problems don't leave this church because of me let's stay and work together you are snoring i am wheezing and then you discharge yourself from the hospital because of my of my my snoring have you been healed of your wheezing no 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 baby only nation no law why resign from the choir because they say you shouldn't sing solo they told you to sit at the back and back because you can't spell the word solo you say sorrow <laughs> if you don't clap you are the one you can't sing solo because you cannot pronounce solo the choir master is not against you that leader of that department is not against you you haven't built capacity to be able to do that thing so they say sit aside and learn in our church if you are not a tither you cannot propose to any woman or man in the church how can a thief propose to my spiritual daughter any of you will you tell your son to marry somebody who is a robber if anybody comes here today and says i want to marry you or want to marry your son or your daughter and you ask them what job you do they say i'm a professional robber because god said if you are not a tither god said you are a robber he didn't say you're a thief there's a difference between a thief and a robber a thief comes quietly and steals a robber says i know it's yours but i will kill you and i'll collect so many of you come to church you are dancing dancing when it's time to give god your tithe you look at him and say holy holy oh damn Clo. if you don't clap you are the one i'm talking about hey. none of you in this room and those watching online in your right mind will give your son or your daughter to somebody to marry who says my professional job is a robber and i just i i i was in prison i've just been I, i've just come out of prison oh, yeah. and <laughs> and i'm interested in your son or interested in your daughter my job is professional robbery which one of you would give your son or your daughter so why should we make you a leader in our church when you are a professional robber of god you don't even rob from people oh. you you rob god your case is different and i should make you a leader of our treasury department or account dep you'll be worse than judas the thief at least judas was called a thief he wasn't called a robber i should make you a leader of the ushers or protocol or security or admin when you steal from god you see some people don't understand the gravity of not tithing and not giving you see if you think you are tithing because of bishop you've missed it i have been tithing since 1989 1989 before many of you were born my church members know i'm not waiting for them to eat my church members have been told several times by me that if i was waiting for you to eat or to wear clothes i would be naked like adam if pastors are waiting for black people in church before they eat by now we have been changed from black to green because black people can choose when to give and when not to give if the praise and worship is good they give five cd if the praise and worship is not give they give two cd they stop at the petrol station and change 10 cd into three parts because they know they'll take three offerings and you think they are giving three times no 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 if you don't clap you are the one i know your tricks because i've been sitting where you were sitting before i became a pastor you don't fool me no you don't fool me 
you can go from here you can go to fiesta royale or kufua hotel and eat but your offering in the basket is pitiful you can use 400 ghana to do your hair on saturday a hair which when you come to church nobody's looking at anyway i am yet to see any woman come to church i said this to our members just in case you think the way i'm preaching i don't preach my member oh the same way oh same and they still come oh yeah you should love the truth Saturday, you spend 400 or 500 or 600 Ghana on your hair. And you come to church and put 10 Ghana cities into the offering basket. So your hair is more valuable than the God who saved you. A year, you are sick. Obey wale. I wish I could speak French. Ile, ile malad. Malad. If you don't clap for me. Those on that side, you are suspect. Malad, malad. Those on that side, he live malad. Aha, uh -huh, malad. Yeah. How can you spend more money on your hair, on your lips, on your earrings, on your chain, on your watch, on your nails, than the God who saved you? A bad scenario. How can you say you love God and you don't tithe? How can you say you love God and you don't tithe? How can you say you love God and you are not a giver? When for God so loved the world, he gave. All lovers are givers, not hoarders. How can you be a lover and not be a giver? And you say we are working well together. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know if you are here. My grandson says, stop it. Two-year-old boy says, stop it. Stop it, granddad. Stop it. Stop it. No, 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 no. How did you get the job you got? How did you get the wife you got? How did you get the husband? How did you get the promotion? How did you get admission into university, college? How did you get that interview? God's hand. And you are spending more on you than the one who gave you. When you were single, you were a woman, and you wanted a husband. You wanted to prove to God that you are serious for a husband, that you didn't even go to women's fellowship, you went to men's fellowship. <laughs> Is this clapping coming? <laughs> you, <laughs> you went to men's fellowship and they asked, uh, sister, what are you doing? Here? I say, I'm desperate for a husband. So I want to go to know how serious I am. That I'm not supposed to be in a men's fellowship, but I'm here to let him know I'm very serious. <laughs> men's fellowship. You are a man. You wanted breakthrough visa to go to America or London. You did not even just go to men's fellowship meeting. You went and sat at the women's fellowship to prove to God this is how desperate I am. The moment you got your breakthrough, oh, two men's fellowship, a low women's fellowship, oh, oh, you didn't pass there, not even go inside, you didn't pass. Oh, nene, sure, say, nobody can talk to you again. I have married a wife. That's what one of them said in the Bible. The other one said, I have bought a house, I'm going to inspect it. You see, there are excuses and there are reasons. Next time I come, remind me to preach on that one because I'm coming back. Sure. Oh, this is my house. This is my home. Bishop is my senior brother. Oh, I'm coming back. When I come, remind me just in case I forget the message. Excuses or reasons. It's a full message. I, I, don't tell you. I have bought a house. I'm going to inspect it. Who buys a house and goes to inspect it after they've bought it and go and inspect it at night? You are sick, but you are not that sick. <laughs> you see, some of the tricks that church people pull. Look, you are smart, but you are not that smart. Yes, some of the things some of you say, which is the reason why you don't tie or don't give or don't go. <laughs> what are you doing? We've been there before. Stop it. Stop it. Give 
to Caesar what is Caesar. Give to God what is God. Make time for God. Make time for church. Make time for prayer. Make time for giving. Prayer is not a substitute for tithing. Suspects. Suspects. Suspects at the back. Those at the back there, I'm not hearing your clap, you know. I have bought an oxen and I'm going to inspect it. Who buys an oxen and goes to inspect it after they have paid for it? Look at your name and say, There's nothing in the, mark, the stomach of a lizard. No. Tithing is one of the number one ways in which we work together. You bring your 10, I bring my 20. You bring your 50, I bring my 5. You bring your 1. And we are building. Listen to what Nehemiah said in Nehemiah 4, 6, 3, 20 or 2, 20. Said, they built their house on time because the people had their mind to work. He said, we will build this house because the Lord our God will prosper us. And we will arise and build. Listen, from that scripture, when God prospers you, it is to arise and build. Not to arise and go to Dubai. You want to go on holidays to Dubai? Go, but come back. And those of you who, when you travel, you think your tithe and offering is also on holiday. I've traveled, so my tithe is also on holiday. But when you come, you want to come here for counseling and for teaching and prayer. If when you went, the building collapsed and there's no more building, when you come back, where will you come? The fact that you are on holiday doesn't mean your money is on holiday. Why are they quiet? Why are they gone quiet all of a sudden? I am blaming those who are not here the Wednesday I came. It must be the ones who came today. Look, everything in my house is debt free. Not from the church members. Ask them when you see them. No, nothing in my house was bought by the church members. My house, I paid for everything. They didn't pay zero. My car, debt free. My house, debt free. Not one single thing. I have not begged my members. I have not arrived psychedelically in my members' house at lunchtime and say I came because the Spirit led me. I rather give to them like your bishop gives to you. You see, we are givers. That's why we are receivers. You want to know our secret? <laughs> we are not just givers, so we've gone past that stage long time giving and receiving no 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 that's for nursery we went past giving giving no our life is a seed we don't just give offering our very life and our money and our car and everything is a seed to god so we have gone past giving giving and receiving ah if my life is a seed any money in my pocket belongs to god so it's not now you are coming to tell me to give before I give. My life is giving. We as pastors, our life is... Have you ever wondered why every week he's always preaching to you? And you know what he's doing? He's very smart. He's always giving. Giving. You are sitting there just receiving. Anytime your pastor comes and starts teaching, and when he's building fund, project offering, and he's giving, you sitting down there is detrimental to your destiny. In, in London, they, say, they used to say, when it's time to give offerings in church the nigerians get up and give then the Ghanaians are sitting now clapping nigerians have given ministry Ghanaians have clapping ministry they used to say but i believe they are not like that here they didn't say amen that means they are like that here i was trying to help you a little bit when they mention giving, Ghanaians, get up! Get up from your blessed assurance. Look, I'll beat you. See me. Look, 
when you tell Ghanaians, let's pray. A sun da fire da, a candle of a dollar of a dollar, in Kakele, Wele, Kele, Wele, Kele, Tatale, Tatale. When we say give, when we say give, I don't like your clapping. <laughs> Pray. Prayer is not the same as giving. How did you spell the two the same? Prayer, giving. P and G, only grammar. Prayer is not a substitute for tithing or giving. You can pray. But when it, you see, the reason why some people don't receive, the Bible never said prayer, pray and receive. It said give and receive. If you want to receive, be a giver. Amen. Don't pray. Look, that's why some people don't have. Let me give you this shocking sense. I know you know this already, but let me remind you. When it comes to prosperity and money, prayer is not in the equation. Look through your whole Bible and tell me where the Bible says pray and you shall receive. Or pray for money. Tell me from Genesis to the end. There's no scripture which says pray. You pray after you have given and the thing is not coming. Then you use prayer to bulldoze the resistance. There's nowhere in the Bible that says pray and receive. Zero times zero is equal to zero. Air times air is equal to zero. So if your offering envelope is full of air and there's no money in it, you are getting an empty envelope back. Air times air is equal to air. Wind times wind is equal to air wind. Money times money is equal to more money. Get it. There are poor people in London, poor people in America. Look, it's not the country you travel to that determines your prosperity. There are poor Ghanaians in London, poor British in London, poor all races in London. Because you see, traveling is not an achievement. You can travel, but if you don't change what is here from the word, you will look worse than when you were in Ghana. Some people think, me quite brochure pair. Baby, I have this up. Eboa. I am telling you, Eboa. It's a lie. People tell you, come, come, come. They will take care of you. They will dodge you. I'm about to be able to say, Tewa. London is a very. Um, naturally. Deceiving. Ah, ah. Very deceptive. Everybody's thinking of themselves. Look, here you can arrive at somebody's house and then they'll share their food with you, even though you didn't tell you are coming. In London, you arrive at somebody's house without telling them. They'll give you a newspaper to read in the, in, the, in the I didn't budget for you to come here. Where are you here? We are not in Ghana. And some of you, you are in a hurry to come to London. You better get advice from Bishop before you travel home, before you become a slave in Libya. nowhere cool oh. nowhere cool nowhere cool if you are not a giver a server of god a tither a prayer warrior and a prayer machine serving god it's not the country you move to there are richer people and bigger houses in ghana than in london the only reason why some of us have survived london is what i'm telling you tithe giving serving god you want to know my secret serving god Serve God and be faithful. Be the word faithful means constant. Some of you small trouble, no. Yeah, my boss, my dear, I can. Ingo gong, ingo gong, ingo gong, many. Ingo gong ho, eh ho. Black mo. Black it. My nose is running. Catch it. The woman with the issue of blood suffered for twelve years. She still went to church and met Jesus. What is your excuse? My husband upset me, so I'm not going to church. Did your husband die on the cross for you? Are you all right? 
My wife is upset. If I come to church today, she won't cook for me. Go to a grubber. Go to the next door. Go and find something to eat. My wife, we have been married for 32 years. My wife and I, we understand each other. I love God more than her. Right. She loves God more than me. Without God, I don't have her. Without God, she doesn't have me. She does not come first. God comes first. Your clapping must be arrested. How do you put your wife before God? How do you put your husband before God? How do you put your job before God? How do you put your children before God? You didn't have children. You used to come to church. Now the child has come. What's the problem? Husband has come. What's the problem? Honey has come. Darling has come. Sweetie has come. So, mini sweetie wanna go down. Mini sweetie in care wanna go down. Some of you listen. Those of you are not married. You have got the wrong information about marriage. When you marry, you will see something. No ko no ko bem. No ko bem. What I mean by that is, marriage is very interesting. We enjoy that. But what I mean, I mean by that is, some of you think it's all romance. Romance. We're here one day. But we're here. But we're here. We're here. But we're here. But we're here. Hey, hey, hey. Oh no no go. You have got bills to pay. Oh yes. You can't be looking into each other's face all the time. Go to work. Yes. You women, the reason why sometimes we hold your hands when we go shopping is because if we let go your hand, our money will finish. <laughs> you think <laughs> you think we held your hand? Because we are being romantic. It's not you, I'm just using an example. Honey, I like to hold your hand when we go shopping. Oh, it's very nice. Hold my hand. You think it's because of love. Equal bank account, and you know no care for here. What you have done to our bank balance. If I leave this your hand, we will even come back. We can't even come back home. And let me close with this one. <laughs> husbands are tithing, but wives are not tithing. Or wives are tithing, husbands are not tithing. Husband, you are the head of your house. You should actually be more of a giver than even your wife. I know women are intrinsically, let me speak some big English, intrinsically, intuitively, powerful givers. Because you see, women were created as receivers. That's why they receive as semen and give it to children. Everything you give a woman, she doubles it and gives you. You give her chop money, she gives you food. You give her semen, she gives you children. You give her love, she gives you hey. <laughs> And the opposite is true. You give her wahala, you get double wahala too. When I upset my wife, I don't wait for God to tell me to apologize. I apologize in advance. Yeah. I score points with her in advance so I can cash it. Yeah, tell us about that. <laughs> when my wife cooks for me and brings it to me and I finish eating, then I put 120 Ghana CD or 150 Ghana CD under the plate. When she goes to wash the dishes and she sees the money there, next time when I come and I say, is there any food? She won't tell me to go and cook myself because she will miss out on 150. <laughs> next time I come, we'll do marriage seminar plus service. Single seminar. I can't. When she sees the money, you know, because in London, sometimes the women, some of the women are so lazy. When you are so, so tired, when you come home, you say, I'm hungry. They say, Microwave. Eh, eh. You know, women, sometimes they answer you with action. Hello. Hmm. How are you? Where? 
Is there any food? How are the children? Are you okay? Be silent. Silent treatment. It must stop. Yeah. Silent treatment must stop. And women, stop closing the gate. Some of you women, yesterday we were at a marriage seminar, we were telling them, some of you women complain. My husband isn't, she doesn't, he doesn't find me attractive anymore. He doesn't look at me the way he used to look. Because, when we married you, you wear lipstick, look at your hair, look at how all of you are looking here. The moment you arrive at the house, how you even remove your brazier and where it lands, we don't even know where it is. They have this psychedelic. We get they got skills. Skills. They say they've got skills. Special skills. A husband is coming home, expecting to find an attractive wife. The woman opens the door, she's covered with a bank coin in Katin coin. A spinach, a mummy. And your lips are as dry as hamatan. How can I kiss Hamatan? Why are you wearing, walking around the house like a grandmother? When before I married you, look at how you have made an effort when you are coming to church. Why don't you do the same at home? I was expecting the man to say amen. So you work well together. Look, women, when my wife, when she married me, I was broke. I was broke. I was, I was so poor, the poor called me poor. So she helped me become prosperous. So when she hit 40, I bought her a brand new car, not from church. Brand new car from Germany. Envy on the left. Jealousy on the right. What am I saying in closing? There are things you women do for your men and certain things you do for your church that will make them write a check for you without thinking. God can do certain mind-blowing things for you if you marry your church. Marry your church. Own your church. Don't see it as bishops. Own it. Own, own the church. That everything you do for this church, you do it as if you started this ministry and founded this ministry. You see, that's what we call loyal. If you are loyal, you'll be faithful because loyalty is of the heart, but faithfulness is of the hand. Loyalty is from the heart. Faithfulness is what you do. Loyal is what you be. So if you are loyal to your leader, you'll be faithful to the church. It will show in what you do and how you do it in church. You don't need convincing to tithe or come early when you're a loyal person. Because you are coming to your own house. You are tied into your own house. When do you complain when you are paying bills in your own house, which is yours? Do you argue when you are using money to refurbish your own house, which belongs to you? If you see this house as your house, you won't complain in tithing and giving. Because you are maintaining your house. You are tied into your house. You are giving to your house. You are praying in your house. Look, it changes everything. It changes everything. Who goes late when they are going to meet a woman they love? They arrive two hours early. So if you love God and love your church, you don't come at nine. You come at eight. And get things in order before the service starts. Because you are in love with God and the place. You don't argue when they say we are coming early because you are coming early to your own place. We are giving to renovate the house or build more churches. It's my church. We are building more churches for us. Why wouldn't I give? Or why would I hold back or the West? Tell other people in the church who want to give not to give. It's an immature way. 
Odemu go wash home. You can give. Somebody shouldn't give because you can give. You don't want to give. Somebody is giving. You are discouraging the person from giving. May you, what happened to Eli must not happen to you for resisting his faith. You don't want to give. Somebody wants any of her ten thousand Ghana. Quick, mine one. Yes, is Yes, it's my house. Why are you giving ten thousand? Because it is my house. Is it your house? Yes, it's my house. So I'm giving ten thousand. What's your problem? Is it your money? Is it your? Is it your money? Go find out your bank number. Is it your money? Somebody you want to give, they can't give. Why should they stop you? Why are you discouraging people from coming early or being zealous about this church? Do you know where they were before God did what He did for them? Do you know where they are coming from? Do you know how much of a sinner they were? Are you all right? Look, before I got saved, I was a terror. I was a terror. So when I became saved, I became a terror for God. Don't try and stop somebody from serving God. You don't know where they came from. You don't know what God has done for them. Where he picked them from. Leave them alone. Finally, look at your name and say, Where? Your neighbor, quick call no edge. No, we no go about him. Bishop, ne get so money. Magic, I'm boy. If you don't know interpretation and say something about this bishop who has been there for me and this church who has been there for me, what I will do to you, I will sin and repent later. I will sin and repent later. The people had a mind to work. So they built the wall. Together. Joined together unto half thereof. Why? The people. The people. The people, not God, though, the people yes, yes. work with their bishop and God to rebuild the house or the wall within 52 days. Yeah. Who built a wall around the whole city of Jerusalem in 52 days? You see, that's what can happen when we are united. Yes. You are tithing, I'm tithing. You are giving, I'm giving. You are serving, I'm serving. You are fasting, I'm fasting. Mm. The worst people in church are the people who they want us to fast for them and they are eating. You want a husband. I have a wife. You want a husband. I'm praying for you. I put my stomach aside. Fasting for you. Then I pass by your house and I'm smelling, thinking, and watching. You are eating and I'm fasting. That's the end of my fast. I don't like your clapping. I said that's the end of my fast. Come on, scream. Shout. Lift up your hand and begin to thank God for the word you have heard. Lift your hand. Rise up on your feet. Lift your hands. Ask for grace. Ask for grace. Grace to do what you have heard. Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.